Welcome to the joy of sewing on a Husqvarna Viking sewing machine. I'm Sue Hausman, and it's my privilege to give you your first lesson on your new Husqvarna Viking Frisia. The Frisia actually comes from the beautiful pink flower Frisia. And there actually are two models in the Frisia line, the model 415 and the model 425, which we'll be sewing on today. When you take it home, the first thing is to take it out of the box and set it on a firm surface, and then you'll want to plug in your foot control. Now, the cord to the foot control is separate from the foot control the first time. Just plug that in firmly. Now it's in forever. You won't take that out again. The other end plugs into the front socket on the sewing machine, and the power cord plugs into the back socket. And then right next to those cords, the on-off switch. So I'll turn on my Freesia, and now we're ready to sew. The first thing we'll talk about is thread, because we'll be threading, and there are lots of different types of threads available. Uh, there are big spools, little spools, skinny spools, fat spools, and the truth is, uh, many times you will want to purchase different kinds of threads for different, for different uses. You'll learn about that in your classes. And when I open the lid on the Frisia, you'll notice there is a spool pin. There's a second auxiliary spool pin that can be put into place. You put it in and pull it down, and that's for specialty threads and twin needle sewing. Lift it and pull it out to remove the auxiliary spool pin. Most important, there are two, two different spool holders that hold the thread in place, a large and a small. You use the large spool holder with the large types of spools. So when you thread, pull the spool out toward you, put the spool of thread on it, and put the large, in this case, spool holder against the thread firmly so that the flat edge is firmly against the thread, okay? Today we're going to use a small style, I call it, or a skinny spool, and for that we use the smaller style spool holder. Now what I like to do is to put my large spool holder on so I know where it is, that's just to keep it, and then I put my skinny spool on with the thread reeling away from me. The horizontal thread delivery system really reels the thread off beautifully. And then the small spool holder firmly against the end of the spool. Now we're ready to thread. This is easy because there's arrows to follow. The first guide right here, put the thread in from underneath, just like that. The second guide right here, put the thread from over the top. Then into the slot following the arrows, down in the slot here, and hidden behind there are the tension discs. This little dial actually controls the tension, and from three to five is the normal. You can leave it right at four and feel confident that you can do all your normal sewing. Under, following the little arrow, up into what we call the take-up lever. Now it's slotted, so I did it pretty fast. I'll do it again for you. You simply bring the thread over the back and forward, and it drops right in. And then there is one more little guide, and you'll see it, right above the needle. Go in from the left. It's really easy. The final step in threading, of course, is to thread the needle from front to back. And you'll see that the white behind the needle helps you with that because you can see very easily. So once we've threaded the top thread, we need to wind a bobbin. Now his corn of Viking bobbins are green and they have a little Husqvarna Viking logo on one side. When you put it on the bobbin winder spindle, put the logo out and then pull it down to put it into bobbin winding position. That means the needle won't go up and down as you wind. Bring the thread under the presser foot, a metal presser foot by the way, which are all you received with your Frisia over the bobbin winding guide, that's this guide right here, and over to the bobbin, putting several turns of thread on the bobbin in a clockwise direction, maybe six or seven turns, just enough to get it started, then put the thread into the cutter right here and cut the thread. Step on the foot control and go. And your bobbin will wind, it will shut off when it's completely wound if you want a full bobbin. And the other thing I want to really point out at this stage is that only Husqvarna Viking winds the bobbin directly from the needle. If we had run out of thread right in the middle of a project, we wouldn't have to unthread everything. We just bring that thread over under the presser foot and go ahead and wind. I won't take time to wind it completely full because we won't need that much today, but I bring the bobbin up 
to turn off the bobbin winding function and then bring it over to the cutter and simply cut the thread and go to put it into my Husqvarna Viking. Now, as you look at the bobbin area, we will just slide off the bobbin cover and set that aside. We won't need it for a minute. And again, we drop that bobbin in place with that Husqvarna Viking logo up. So just drop it in. It won't actually go in wrong. If you try to put it in upside down, it won't go in. So the little logo is up. Now, to thread the bobbin, right here at the front, there is a little tension spring. Hold the bobbin firmly with one finger and slide the thread into that tension spring and over to the left, and you'll actually hear it click up into the guide <laughs> and down into the cutter and then slide on the cover and cut the thread. Another wonderful Husqvarna Viking feature, there's no need to bring up the bobbin thread when you begin to sew. It comes up automatically. All right, believe it or not, we're all set to go and I'm going to close the lid and point out that on the lid of my Husqvarna Viking Frisia 425, all of my stitches are pictured and they're numbered. That tells me how to select them. Actually, when I turn on my Husqvarna Viking Frisia, it comes on to stitch 00, which is the straight stitch. And if you'll follow my finger across, you'll see that we have actually 30 stitches on the Frisia 425. Now, to select a stitch, I would simply touch the buttons on my display. And you'll see that I have 00 for straight stitch. If I plus the button, stitch number 20 would be a different stitch. But right now, I want the stitch 00 straight stitch. And notice the flashing, recommending that I should use my presser foot A and a recommendation for tension, four to six. So I've set my tension normally, I have the A foot snapped on, and I'm going to place my fabric underneath the presser foot, reach behind and lower that presser foot lift always before you begin sewing, okay? And once you've done that, you step on the foot control and you're ready to go and sew. The one five is actually the five eighths limit is the seam allowance on the plate okay now let's point out a couple more things over on our functions because at the beginning of sewing I would normally reverse stitch to tie off and so I would simply press this little reverse button and while I'm pressing it my Husqvarna Viking sews backwards I can also do permanent reverse if I touch it twice in quick succession You'll notice that the little arrow stays firmly on the info display and now I will sew backwards until I touch the arrow to come forward and I almost went off the fabric there. That's normally uh, the reverse button is the way we would backstitch at the beginning and the end of seams. But your Husqvarna Viking Frisia has a wonderful feature called fix. And what you will do is simply touch the fix button and what will happen when you do that is that your Frisia will tie off in place and finish sewing for you. So you're all set to go. Once we've sewn our stitch, uh, we've got our finished straight stitch, okay? Now, would you like to see how to change the stitch length? Because you may want a longer or a shorter stitch length. And that's an easy thing to do too. The left number, 2.5, is the stitch length and 2.5 is normal for medium weight fabric but if I want a shorter stitch length I would minus it if I would like a longer stitch length I would simply plus it and I'm going to plus it all the way up to the stitch length of 6.0 which would be a basting or a gathering stitch and so what I would do then to baste and pull out my threads or better yet to gather something I would simply pull on that thread and it would gather it right up. Look at that. Isn't that fun? <laughs> so you know that the straight stitch, I'm sure, is really the function that you will use the most on your Husqvarna Viking Frisia for regular sewing. But I'd also like to point out, I'm going back to normal stitch length 2.5, that your straight stitch has 25 needle positions. Now a straight stitch doesn't have width. So if I were to touch the width button, 
obviously my needle would move and I'll touch my width and my needle moves actually six different steps to the left, okay? And when I minus it, it moves back to the middle. But when it's all the way over at the left, I have the option of touching a function called mirror image and that will reverse things and I simply touch that and then my needle goes to the right. And I'll scoot over here to the edge of the fabric to show you how convenient that would be for top stitching closer to an edge. By the way, notice my needle always ends in the up position. <laughs> Actually, if I would like it down, I simply tap the foot control. Watch and I'll do it for you. Tap the foot control, the needle goes down. Let's sew a little ways here. When the needle is up, when I stop, I simply tap the foot control and it's in the down position and that allows me to turn and to pivot by raising my presser foot slightly. So we're ready to go now. I want to tell you one more thing about needle position because actually there are times that you would use that and one of the main ones is when you're putting in a zipper and our presser feet, I'm going to go actually to my furthest right needle position the 25th one over, <laughs> and I will snap off the presser foot. Okay, so the presser feet snap on and off very easily. Just grasp them and pull them down and toward you, and off they come. And the new presser foot, in this case the zipper foot, has a little bar on the right side and the left side. I'm going to press it on first by simply pushing that little bar up and into the shank or ankle, and now you can see how close I could stitch to that side of the zipper. To get close on the other side, simply snap it off, and you see the little piece there that you can, it's like a little hinge that you can just go right into, and now by touching mirror image, remember, that's what brought that over. I simply touch mirror image, and that brings that needle over, and now you can see how close I can get to my zipper on the other side of that zipper teeth. So, we've learned a lot already. We've learned about straight stitch, we've learned reverse, we've learned the fixed stitch, and about needle positions. But I talked about width there, and I think it's important to know that width is really something you will use most when you're sewing stitches that have a width, a zigzag, for example. So, I'm going to select my stitch number three, which is my zigzag. And since this is really the first stitch that we've selected, I want to take a close look over here at just how we select stitches. Again, we have zero, zero in the info display, which is a straight stitch. And a plus and a minus underneath, and a plus and a minus. The, the left plus and minus changes the number to the left. Watch as I change it. One, two, three, four, it goes up to one, two, Actually, we only have 29 stitches, so it only needs to go to 2. But I'm going to 03, so I'll leave it at 0. And the plus and minus on the right changes the right number. And that does go all the way to 9 because we have many stitches on our freesia. But I'm going to set it to 03, which is a zigzag stitch, and you will see that the normal setting is 3, length, uh, three width. Excuse me. The width is, in, is actually indicated by the little zigzag and the width changing there from plus to minus, plus being widest, minus being narrowest, and then the length is automatically set at 2.0. So as I begin to sew that zigzag at 2.0 length and 3 width, I'm going to actually change my width to go all the way to 6. And I'll show you this sample so that you can see how the width of that now at six millimeters wide swings the entire width of that uh, hole in the presser foot. Do you see how we went from a narrow width all the way up to a wide? So now you understand the concept of straight stitch and zigzag and width. One of the things that we do a lot in our sewing is finish the edges to keep them from fraying. Boy, this piece of fabric is fraying already on me. I have a little blouse or top here that started and you can see to keep these edges from fraying they've been finished with a three-step zigzag down the front of the facing and on all the seams. And then actually the seam would be sewn at that 5-8 seam allowance and pressed open. So this would give me the nice finish that I desire on the inside of my clothes. How do we get that great overcasting stitch it's called? Well, we look, of course, at our stitch selection and I see that that is stitch number four.
And so I'm going to select stitch number four. And remember, it's 04, so the O is there. I simply plus to four. Yes. And now I am ready to sew my stitch number four. And I would simply take my edge of fabric and I would stitch down the edge of my fabric like so. Now, a lot of folks use a regular zigzag for this. Notice, by the way, that our computer sewing machine, the Freesia, would be good to trim some of those off before you start. The computer Freesia automatically selects the best length and width in an instant for you. You don't have to even think about that because the computer is doing it for you. But there you see now the edge of my fabric all finished so that we wouldn't have to finish that off uh, in any other way. So, overcasting. Now, would you like to see a faster way to sew than what I just showed you? Well, you actually could sew that seam, that 5-8 seam, and overcast it all at one time by using a seam overcast stitch. I'm going to look again at my stitches, and I'm going to select stitch number 5 which is a seam overcast stitch. So I go to my stitch selection, zero, five, yes. Oh, I have a blinking foot recommendation. <laughs> because this is a seam overcast stitch, and by the way, I should add that all of these accessory feet will store right in your little accessory box at the back of your freesia, and so you'll have them right where you need them. The accessory box can be left on when you want a flatter surface and taken off when you want to use the free arm. And so I'm going to leave it off because actually my preference is to work with the free arm most of the time. Well, I'm snapping on the J foot, which was recommended. And it's called an overcast guide foot because as I sew my seam, there's a little wire. And I'll point to that. I don't want to get too close or I'll break the needle. And never get your fingers close as you're sewing. You don't need to. Your freesia sews beautifully. There's a little wire on the right side of that foot at, that the stitches actually form over. And as the stitches form over that wire, you can see that they are being stitched very flat. We could even work right at the edge of the fabric if our pattern called for quarter inch seam allowances. So you have the option of working off the edge of your fabric or of sewing a 5 8 inch seam and then what I would do is trim away the excess fabric and press it to one side uh, to finish it off almost like a serger. Well this is something that we really enjoy when we're working on knits. And uh, I don't know if you've ever made a t-shirt, but a t-shirt is a real quick thing to make. And I'm going to cut a little neckline here. We'll see what it looks like. There's my little neckline on my t-shirt knit. And I'm going to take ribbing. And ribbing is actually a fabric that you buy by the inch. And then you cut it to strips. And you fold it wrong sides together and place it along the neck of a t-shirt. Won't it be fun to make some t-shirts? I'm going to select a new stitch, this time what's called a stretch overlock stitch. And it is stitch number six, so I'm going to simply touch the six. And it's recommending the B foot. Isn't it great that what you need to do flashes? I love it. And the fact is the B foot has a tunnel underneath that will feed over the buildup of stitching and also allows spongy knits to feed a little bit smoother uh, because of their bulk and their stretchiness. There's one other thing on knits that's generally recommended and you'll need to see uh, on your Husqvarna Viking Freesia as you sew, but we do have adjustable presser foot pressure. And the normal range is marked with a little dark gray by the four. But for knits, we would normally reduce that pressure slightly. Okay? So I'm ready to sew. I'm going to lower my presser foot. And I'm going to go ahead and put on that ribbing. You stretch the ribbing as you sew. And you're sewing right off the edge, applying the ribbing to the neckline, the cuff, <laughs> the hip line, wherever your pattern calls for ribbing. And now you see first the stitch on the wrong side. And then let me turn it over and show you the wonderful finished result on the right side. Boy, you will be sewing so professionally. Won't this be great? One more stitch that's perfect for knits is called the flat lock. And it's stitch number seven. 
So of course, you know by now, I simply go to my stitch selection and I plus the right number to number seven. And again, I remind you that the length and the width are set instantly and automatically thanks to my Husqvarna Viking Frisia computer sewing machine. It's all done right inside. Okay, I'm going to fold up a hem in these knit, in this knit fabric, and then I'm going to actually turn it over and work from the right side. This will give you such a professional looking hem because it'll look just like those ready to wear pants uh, that you buy or necklines that you buy that are all flat locked. And of course, I did show you ribbing a minute ago. I'm going to take this one off and show you that. And what we'll do then from the wrong side is actually trim away any excess of the uh, any excess of the hem that we have, okay? And now you see that we have our little flat locked hem. And I've got a, a wonderful little shirt here that's done that way. The hem is actually flat locked and also the ribbing is flat locked right around the edge of that. Well, what about hems on garments that you don't want to show? Obviously, we could top stitch a hem with a straight stitch or a flat lock. I brought along a pair of pants that I wanted to share with you because the truth is, this morning, I did these so that you could see uh, they're, they're a nice pair of lined pants, but I'm, we're going to get a close-up look at the hem. Now, I have a serger, a husky lock, so I actually finished the edges first with my husky lock, but you can see the gold thread, I think, and that gold thread is the blind hem. I turned back the hem, and I stitched along the edge, and then you'll see now that you virtually can't even see that hem on the right side, even though the thread didn't match. Now, you match the thread, you'll never see it. Let's learn how to do it, shall we? Well, I'm going to first look at my stitch dial and know that the blind hem is stitch number eight. So I'll select stitch number eight. And again, whoop, consulting my info display, it's going to tell me with the flashing D <laughs> that I should snap on that D foot. So I'll snap off the B and snap on the D. Isn't it great that these feet have letters on them. One habit that I'm in is to always put my threads under the foot and toward the back before beginning to sew. I will just remind you of that. It's just a really good habit to get into. I'll want a couple of pins for this. At the ironing board, I would press up my hem in my plaid skirt. I would have actually finished this edge with my three-step zigzag or if you're lucky enough to have a husky lock, then you would do it with the serger. And you're going to pin that hem, what I call perpendicularly. Pin it like this into the hem and have the first bite of the pin be right at the quarter inch in from the edge. You'll see why in just a minute. Now, as you go to the sewing machine, we look at it this way. And you'll have the bottom edge of the hem to the right, and you'll have the raw edge of the hem to the left, and this is a trick. You fold that hem back under toward the right side, okay? So you take the hem and you fold it back under toward the right side. You're working on the wrong side, and take a look at that great little D foot. It's actually got a little ledge that one toe is riding higher on the folded part, and one toe is riding right along the edge of that, D, uh, of that blind hem. And now as you begin to sew, watch what happens. You get a series of zigzags and then a wider zigzag. Now, we want the wider zigzag to catch the fold edge. If your zigzag isn't quite wide enough, what you need to do is simply increase the width and make it a smidge wider. And so now I actually increased the width by one notch and now I'm stitching along. By the way, be sure to pull those pins out before you get to them. You wouldn't want to sew into those. You can't even sew over them because they're sewn the way they're pinned. So be sure to pull them out. But once we've sewn it, you can see now how we've just barely caught that fold and look at this, our hem is all stitched. We can't see it one bit on the right side. We can see it on the wrong side, of course, but not one bit on the right side. So won't this hemming be wonderful for you? Well, another sewing technique that we use a lot in 
construction of garments is buttonholes, of course. And your Husqvarna Viking Frisia makes great buttonholes. Model 425, as you can see on the stitch selection, actually has two styles of buttonhole. A bar tack for your more standard sewing of shirts and tailored garments, and a keyhole for those coatings and other garments where you would like the more keyhole look. Uh, the 415 model does only have the bar tack, so keep that in mind. I'm going to select the bar tack buttonhole, number 26, so here's my chance. I plus the left number to 2, and I'll minus the right number to 6, number 26, and I see that C is flashing. I'm snapping on the C foot. There's one more piece of information that's recommended on the info display for buttonholes recommends that I ch turn my tension to a lower number, slightly lower. What that will do is pull the top thread to the wrong side and give you a satinier buttonhole. All right, we're ready to sew, and I do have stabilizer in my buttonhole. In this case, I would expect it to be interfaced. Often I use stabilizer as well under a buttonhole. And you'll notice that the foot has different length toes, okay? You would actually take your button and lay the button against the needle. So I'll put the needle down a little bit. And when you lay the button against the needle, whatever line on the long toe, <laughs> whatever line on the long toe that that button comes up to, keep that in mind because you're going to sew to that line before the direction changes. All right? So now we're ready to begin our buttonhole, and I will simply start sewing. Here we go, and I think you'll see that we are sewing backwards first. This is on purpose because now we can see that the line has reached, uh, the, excuse me, the stitching has reached the line that we, that we took note of. So to make the buttonhole change direction, I'm going to touch reverse on my display and when I touch reverse it's going to take and sew now the bar tack and then the other end of the buttonhole. So ready to go there's the bar tack and now we're going to come down the other side of the buttonhole. Automatically you don't have to do anything. Touch reverse again when you reach the starting point and go ahead and it will bar tack and tie off for you. Great! Now, to put that buttonhole into memory so that you can sew a second one, you simply touch stop over on your selection panel. Now that I've touched stop, I'll get a second buttonhole just like the first. And so here we go. And you will see that automatically my Frisia knows to sew a second buttonhole. Isn't that going to save you time? Just like so. And those bar tacks are actually mending stitches. Stops automatically. What a time saver that is. All right. Now, once we've got buttonholes, the obvious next step would be to have buttons. And we can sew on buttons with our Frisia. We're going to go to a new spot on our sewing machine, and that is right down here in front. And what I'd like you to see there is that there's a little minus and there's a little feed teeth. It's actually feed teeth up, feed teeth down. To sew buttons on, we're going to put the feed teeth down. So I'll move the little wheel under here. I already did it. I'll move it to the left, and you'll hear a little sound. Once you've lowered those feed teeth, remember this, that the material won't feed through the machine, all right? We don't want that with a button, of course. I will snap off the presser foot. You don't use a presser foot when you're sewing on buttons. I'm going to select the zigzag stitch. And if you remember, the zigzag stitch, I just look right up at my reference, is 03. So I'll select stitch 03. And I'm going to use the ankle only, no presser foot. I have taken and taped with regular transparent tape, like we use in office supply taped the button in place, and before I begin sewing with the foot control, I'm actually going to take one stitch manually with the hand wheel, just to make sure that my needle's lined up with the holes. Then simply step on the foot control, remember it won't feed because actually it's all in one place, and touch fix, 
and it will tie off for you. Remember that wonderful fixed tie off. And believe me, these buttons are not going to go anywhere. Okay, they're going to stay on. And so we've sewn our button in place, just take the tape off, and now you're ready to go. Um, I don't talk too much about mending because I don't do too much of that myself, but the truth is I know a lot of you are doing mending. And so we will take an, a pair of jeans, and what we'll do is slide it over. Oh, got to bring up that feed teeth, yes. So I'll go back to the little wheel, and at the little wheel I'll simply moved it to the right so that you can see that we've got that little wheel uh, to the right and the feed teeth aren't up yet but they'll come up the minute I start to sew. There is a special darning stitch on your Husqvarna Viking Frisia. It's number 28 and I'm going to select stitch 28 so 2 and 8 and this is another stitch that you can put into program. We'll cut a little tear in our jeans here and, well, these are tough jeans. Once we've got a little hole to, to darn, uh, our A foot is recommended. So I'll snap on that A foot, and I'll get over my little hole, put the presser foot down, and I'll simply go ahead and sew. When I have the length of darn I would like, I touch reverse. When I touch reverse, automatically now, my freesia begins to go in reverse after the length that I have set and sews 12 stitches, 12 actually rows back and forth 12 times and then ties off and darns right over my hole. Now if you'd like to reuse this size of darning, you can simply touch stop and put that into memory. Um, our jeans are easy to sew and easy to mend thanks to the freesia and built-in darning stitches. All right, once we've done that, let's move on to some fun stutch stuff. <laughs> a tapered satin stitch in this case. And here you see a beautiful pillow top with some tapered flowers. Now this taper satin stitch actually allows you to do monograms and all other kinds of fancy stuff. And so I'm going to select stitch number 29, which is the taper satin stitch. And you see it has a point and an end. I'm going to tell you how that works. The B foot is recommended, and of course that, if you recall, was the foot with the tunnel underneath it. But I'm going to use a different foot this time. I'm going to use my accessory foot, which is the open toe foot. You'll see it on the machine in a minute. And with your freesia, you received an accessory user's guide that's full of ideas for you and instructions on how to use each one of the many, many accessories that are available. Feet and accessories that will make your sewing easier on your freesia. So snap off that A foot, snap on the open toe foot. It has a little line that lets you see right where you're sewing and lets you sew uh, over bulky stitches like satin stitch, which is what we're going to sew right now. And in addition to that, uh, you will see that it does sew and let you visually see it. I'll begin sewing stitch number 29 and you'll see that it starts at a point and sews out to my widest zigzag in a satin stitch. When I touch reverse, it actually tapers right back to the point and stops sewing. Tap that foot control and you can see that if I wanted flower petals, I could simply go out this way and again make the same, Let's touch my reverse. Or if you're doing a letter and you'd like to put a certain length in memory, then simply sew one side of the letter and touch reverse to tie it off. And then touch the stop. And that will put the length of satin stitch that I have put in memory, uh, have sewn first into memory. And I'll go ahead now and sew the other side of my H, in case you wondered what letter I was doing here. And you'll see that it does tie off for me. And then, of course, I could just add the crossbar with a similar type stitch. And so now you see that the satin taper really does make your sewing so fun and so easy. And take a look at, you can practice that, some of the work that you can do with satin taper stitches doing flowers and leaves and stems. Beautiful.
Another satin type stitch actually is applique. Stitch number 19 is a pre-programmed satin stitch. So I'll select stitch 19 and it's actually set at a wide width. Now applique can add a wonderful detail to just about anything. Doesn't this heart kind of perk up that little uh, blouse to add a satin stitched applique, okay? Really a fun one. And uh, remember when you're doing applique that you want the satin stitch width to be proportionate to the design that you're doing. And so I have already cut out my applique with a fusible web on the back and I would stick that onto my fabric and I would usually press it with an iron, although this is the Steam Seam 2, which is pressure sensitive, so it actually sticks on for me. I'll continue to use that uh, wonderful open toe foot, and in this case, usually start in an easy spot. I'll start down at the bottom here. And to be honest with you, I usually would use a really pretty, like a sulky thread for applique because you'll get a much satinier look and that is what I used on my blouse. But here we'll go ahead and stitch and you'll see that this is quite a wide satin stitch. You just want to be sure that you know that on the taper satin stitch and the pre-programmed satin stitch that you can adjust the width. If you want a narrower satin stitch, simply adjust the width to a narrower width. There I adjusted it so narrow I wasn't on the edge of the fabric. But the idea with applique of course is to stitch off the edge of the fabric and to finish off that edge with a wonderful satin stitch. So you can do great applique. Now one of my other favorites is heirloom sewing and hem stitching. And I do have a blouse here that has some lace insertion that was done with hem stitching. Hem stitching is actually done with a wing needle. And what's really fun is to think that you can do this right on your freesia. You normally would use a fabric that is uh, linen or natural fiber. The wing needle has a big, hole, a big shape to it. It's a, a needle that has just like wings on it, I guess you might say. And the idea is, of course, that it'll poke a big hole in your fabric. And we haven't talked about changing needles, so now's the best time to do it. There is a screwdriver in your accessory set, and we're going to simply loosen the needle. And we'll take the new needle with the flat side away, away from us, and we will actually put that new needle up into the needle clamp and tighten the screw. Don't turn it too many times. I've seen people that tend to just crank down that needle. That's not necessary. Uh, I will now select one of the hem stitches and the hem stitches are numbers 15 through 18. So let's try stitch number 15 uh, and oh, I'm going to do 16 because that's my favorite, the entredeau stitch. And we'll set stitch 16. Recommended is the A foot. We would match the top and bobbin thread and we would sew with a stabilizer underneath on our woven fabric that is uh, loosely woven, generally a linen, a linen cotton blend. And truthfully, this is usually done in a matching thread color and a fine weight thread so that the thread doesn't fill the holes. But you do get the idea, I think, that you see those holes forming thanks to that needle. By the way, one other thing that I haven't mentioned. Anytime we use the stabilizer, we're actually using a tearaway stabilizer. And once you're finished with your sewing, you would just tear it off the back of your fabric. That's what you would do to get rid of it. So keep that in mind for all of your decorative stitching. Now, we're going to do some decorative stitching. And your Freesia 425 really has a lot of beautiful decorative stitches. I'm quickly changing the needle. And in this case, we're going to go back to our uh, stitch display. And you will see that we have many beautiful stitches in the numbering from 10 to actually to 25. So lots of beautiful ideas that you can do. My suggestion to you is to run a stitch sampler. For example, select stitch 10, which is your first decorative stitch. Take a piece of fabric with a stabilizer underneath, okay, and then, whoa, it says to snap on that B foot, so I'm going to be sure and use the B foot or my open toe foot where I can see a little better. 
That has the tunnel underneath, that's the reason. And I'm going to then go ahead and stitch some decorative stitching. And what I would suggest to you is to make a sampler. Just take a piece of fabric and sew all your decorative stitches so you know what you have. One of the fun things is that when I touch stop on my display, my Freesia will finish the design it's on and will tie off. If you should ever want just a single pattern, touch the design and then touch stop. And you will sew one pattern only of that design. Now, another wonderful thing for decorative sewing is mirror image. Maybe you would like that stitch to be facing the other way. If so, then you simply touch mirror image. And that will flip that design over from side to side and you can have facing patterns. How about that? Now, not only do you have a huge selection of beautiful decorative stitches, but you can also put them into program on Freesia Model 425. It's very easy. What I'll do is simply touch the function button. I will touch the function button and you'll notice on the info display that the normal function, which is what we use for all standard sewing and to select stitches by number from our stitch display, when I touch the function button, aha, that function switches to program. I couldn't sew in this, by the way. I'm trying right now to step on the foot control. It won't go anywhere. The program is blinking, saying you can't sew in program. Okay. Now I will select the stitches that I would like to program. And by the way, there is a quick reference for you right up under the cover so that you can check out any of the things that you're doing, such as buttonhole, or in this case, the two things that can go into program, the quick info. So I would touch stitch 13. All right, there's stitch 13. And I would then enter it by touching the little arrow. And then I would touch stitch 14. And I would enter it by touching the arrow. And to sew it, I would touch the function button to go to repeat. OK, and there we go. We can sew that program that quickly and that easily. And you'll see flower leaf, flower leaf, flower leaf. And we'll pull it out and show you so that you can get an idea of what the beautiful stitch programs. We've got a thread cut there. There we go. Leaf, flower, leaf, flower. Well, I hope that this has been helpful. And uh, whether you sew every day or whether you sew just occasionally, I know that your Freesia will be ready to go and give you beautiful, quick, easy, creative sewing at any time. Be sure to visit your Husqvarna Viking store often and check out all the things they have there. Pick up a zigzag magazine for sure. Maybe rent some America Sews videos and take a look at those sewing books. Sign up for a class. Join Viking Club. Well, I hope you're watching America Sews. And until next time, happy sewing.